that the light of the moon was its own light. But Quran says in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 61, Blessed is he, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has made the constellations in the sky and placed therein sun, that is a lamp, having its own light, and moon, having borrowed light. The Arabic word used for the sun in the Quran, it is shams. And its light is always described as siraj, wahaj, or diya, which means a torch having a light of its own, or a blazing lamp, or a shining glory. Always the light of the sun is described as wahaj, siraj, or diya, meaning a light of its own. The Arabic word for moon is kamar, and its light is described as munir or noor, meaning borrowed light or a reflected light. There is not a single place in the Quran where the light of the moon is described as its own light. And the Arabic word for star is najam, and its light is described as saqib, meaning the light, by the time it reaches the earth, it loses its brightness, like a piercing brightness. The bright light, by the time it reaches, it consumes itself. And this message, that the sun has its own light, describing as Wahaj, Siraj, or Diya, and the moon having borrowed light, that is Munir, or reflection of Nainur, is mentioned in several places in the Quran, including Surah Yunus, chapter number 10, verse number 5, as well as Surah Nuh, chapter number 71, verse number 15 and 16. And the Quran says in Surah Tariq, chapter number 86, verse number 3, that what Najm was Saqib, describing the star, its light as Saqib, that means it pierces, it's a piercing darkness. Previously, the European scientists, they believed that the earth was the center of the solar system and the universe. And all the planets, as well as the moon, and the sun, it revolved around the earth. This was called as geocentrism. And this was believed since the time of Ptolemy in the second century BC till as late as 16th century. Until Nicholas Copernicus in 1512, he propounded the heliocentric theory of the planetary motion and he said, it is the sun which is the center of the solar system and all the planets as well as the earth it revolves around the sun and later on a german scientist by the name of johannes kepler in 1609 he wrote in his book by the name astronomia novia that not only do the planets and the earth they revolve around the sun but they also rotate about their own axis and when I was in school, I passed my school in 1982, about more than 25 years back. There I too read that the planets and the earth, they revolve around the sun, and the planets and the earth, they rotated about their own axis. And the whole solar system, also in the galaxy it revolved, including the sun, but the sun did not rotate about its own axis. In this context, the sun was stationary. But when I read the verse of the Quran in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 33, which says, It is Allah who has created the night and the day. The sun and the moon. Each one traveling in orbit with its own motion. So the Quran says, the sun and the moon Besides revolving, they also rotate about their own axis. The Arabic word used here is yasbahun, derived from the Arabic word sabaha, which describes the motion of a moving body. If I use this Arabic word yasbaha for a person who's moving on the floor, it will not mean that he's rolling, it will mean he's either walking or running. If I use the same word for a person in the water, it will not mean he's floating, it will mean he's swimming. 
Similarly, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the same word for a celestial body, it does not mean that it is flying in the air. It means it is moving along with its own rotation. It is rotating about its own axis. So Quran says the sun and the moon, besides revolving, it also rotates about its own axis. And today, science has discovered that even the sun rotates. Since we can't see the sun directly, you get blinded if you see directly. If you have an equipment and have the image of the sun on a tabletop, we find that there are spots in the sun. And it takes about 25 days for the spots to complete one rotation, indicating that the sun takes approximately 25 days to complete one rotation. Imagine when I was in school, I was taught the sun was stationary, didn't rotate about phone axis. And the Quran mentioned 14 years ago that it rotates. And now, Alhamdulillah, most of the schools have incorporated that the sun also rotates. Further, we read in the Quran. It's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Yaseen, chapter number 36, verse number 40. It is not permitted for the sun to overtake the moon, nor the night to outstrip the day. The moon and the sun. Kulun fi falaki as bahoon, each one traveling in orbit with its own motion. Now the scientists say that the orbit of the sun and the moon is different. So there's no question of the sun overtaking the moon. That's what the Quran says. And today the scientists they tell us that the sun is moving in a direction in the universe to a particular fixed direction which is called as the solar apex. In the constellation of Hercules, also known as Alpha Lyra, at a speed of 12 miles per second. And today the scientists they tell us that the sunlight we have is due to a chemical reaction which is taking place since billions of years. And one day, this chemical reaction will cease. And so will the light of the sun cease to exist. And so will the life on this earth cease to exist. But the scientists say it will take another few billion years. Quran gives a similar message in Surah Yaseen, chapter number 36, verse number 38. That the sun is running its course for a period determined, to a place determined. The Arabic word used here is mustakar, which has two meanings. Either it means for a period determined, or it means to a place determined. And today science says that the sun is moving to a particular spot known as solar apex and it will exist for a particular time period. So both the meanings of mustakar to a place to the mind and for a period to the mind according to science is perfect. Imagine, Quran mentions this 1400 years ago. When I was in school, I had learned that there are three types of matter, solid, liquid and gas. And previously, the scientists believed that the space outside the astronomical systems in the galaxy, it was vacuum. Lately, the scientists have discovered that there are bridges of matter in the interstellar space. It's not vacuum. And it is called as plasma. And they say this matter is in a form of gaseous matter, which has equal number of positive ions as well as electrons and the Quran mentions 1400 years ago in Surah Furqan chapter number 25 verse number 59 it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created the heavens and the earth as well as things in between it so Quran says there is matter in between the heavens and the earth which today science they say that this plasma can be considered as the fourth type of matter Today, science also tells us that the atmosphere of the earth, it acts like a filter and prevents the harmful radiations from outer space to come onto the surface of the earth.